Hi guys, welcome to Go Tutorial Part 15. My name is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. And today we are going to build a module to allow us to create pages for our wiki. And we are going to take a look at how we can create some middleware that will allow us to basically reuse some of our code so that we won't have as much of a verbose environment with these handlers. So one of the first things I want to do here is actually remove this import. This was actually bugging the hell out of me when I was watching the video. Let's remove that and I also want to put this up here. Generally when you organize your imports you want to organize the core library imports at the top and then the you know, third party ones at the bottom. At least that's how I like to do it. So let's actually build our create function here. Um, create in this case is going to be a bit like sign up and a bit like how we had our upload where we have a switch statement that covers both get and post. Alright, so we want to start with our switch statement here. So switch, and we want it on our method. In the first case being get, and the second case being post. Now I know what you're thinking, or some of you are probably thinking, why isn't he using put instead of post? Mainly because in this particular application, if we used put, it wouldn't work properly with the current way that we're using code. So the first thing we want to do is instantiate a instance of page, and then we just want to render a template that we're going to create called create, and we're going to pass our page into it. All right, so that's pretty simple. For post, we are just going to also create an instance of page. So we're going to get our title first. Title is going to come from our R form value, and we're going to make a form value called title. We're also going to have a body variable, which is going to come from our form value body and then we are going to make a page and then we are just going to call p.savecache on this and that will input our page into our database as well as create a new file inside the cache folder and we could do a little bit of error handling here so let's just do a quick little error here so we'll just throw a status internal server error with our string and then finally we want to redirect so we're going to redirect to our newly created page I'm going to throw in a return statement here even though we probably won't need it just to make sure that we don't run into any errors another thing we want to do to make sure the title doesn't have any spaces in it because that would be a problem see somebody typed in two words like I don't know they wanted a page that was like hello world for example because we currently can't handle that we want to make sure that they can't do it so so we're just gonna say if strings dot contains title and we're gonna say if our title contains a space and we're just going to redirect back to the create and let's throw a return after this alright so you may notice that we're not checking for our cookie in this get statement or in this post statement this is something that we're going to rectify very soon. For now, we're just going to leave this alone. And let's build a template for our create function. So we're going to make a new HTML file, and let's just call it create.html. And we're going to basically just take our edit, so this little part of it here, and we're going to just edit it. So let's take a look. First, we want to define this template. So define, create. Then we want to import the header and the navbar. Of course we need the footer and we need our end statement. So currently our form is not how we want it so we want this action to be of create a method post and we need two text areas so we only have one currently. This will have a name of body and then above it we'll put an input surrounded by a div with a name of title and an ID of title. Let's throw in an ID here. And then finally, for our button, we want this to say create page. All right, so now we need to import our navbar for this particular page. So let's go into our edit and just grab this entire navbar. So now we need to go back into our main function and implement our create function. So let's go down here, create a handle func on the create, and we're going to call create. So now if we run all this, so to get to our create, currently we do not need to sign in, so let's just get to create. So here's our create page, as you can see, create a new page. We've got our title box here and our body box here. 
And if we type in a title with two words, for example, hello world, we hit the create page, it'll just redirect us back here. Also, we probably want to put labels here so that people understand what they're actually doing. Okay, so we've added a label here. So label for title, and it says enter a title. And then label for body, and it says enter a body. And if we refresh this, it should show up. So enter a title, enter a body. So now that we've created our create function, let's actually take a look at how we can actually reuse some of our codes and create a little piece of middleware that can help us organize our code. One of the things that we've been reusing multiple times throughout this, we've been checking to see if we have a user ID here. So we've been using our get user ID function and then checking to see if the user ID is empty or not. So we're going to create a piece of middleware here. It's called check UUID. It's going to take in a function and the function just needs to satisfy what a handler looks like in Golang, which means it just takes in an HTTP response writer and an HTTP request and it outputs a HTTP handler func. And then we're going to return that handler func, which again is satisfying that shape. And inside of it, we're going to check our unique user ID. Then we're going to check if that unique user ID is not empty. And if it's not empty, we are going to issue a new function. If it is empty though, we are going to redirect back to our index. What we can do with this is we can actually come up here to all the places where we're actually checking for our unique user ID. We can remove this completely as well as this. So now we've cleaned up our upload function. We can also do the same for our edit function and we can do the same for our view function. So now I've taken out all of those parts that we're checking for our unique user ID and actually if we look, if we search for all the places where we are getting our unique user ID, the only place where I haven't removed it is our index page and our login because these are completely different as well as our example page because these are different. If I was to remove it from here we wouldn't be able to set the message as well. So alright so now how do we actually implement this check user ID closure? We just go in here and we implement it. So what this is basically doing is we are creating new handlers which are wrapped inside of this closure and they are being created by this closure and based on the bit of logic that we've bound to them. And we're actually going to create another closure that we can also wrap these in. But first let's run this and show that it actually is working. Here we're actually at our create page. I haven't refreshed yet. So if I refresh things it will automatically redirect us back to login. So let's try logging in. If I remember our password from last time, it should still be in the database. We can go to our test page, we can go to our edit page, our upload page, and even our save page is now protected. And if we go to create, we also have a, we can now see create. So believe it or not, closures are extremely powerful in Go web development. It's something that a lot of people would use and we're actually going to build another one and we're going to build another one because we want to restrict the titles that a user can enter so that they can't go to random path. So now we've created a very simple regular expression. As you can see, we're creating a variable called valid path. We're calling the regex library, which we just imported and I'm going to actually bring this up above and we're calling a function called must compile and this means that anything that is using this regular expression must follow this regular expression and we're saying here that the first path can follow either a backslash with nothing in it or it can be edit, save, test, or create and then we're saying that the second part has to be one word and it can be a combination of any lowercase letters, any uppercase letters, and any numbers between 0 and 9. So let's actually implement this now onto our other piece of middleware here. So this function is going to be called check path. So as you can see with our new closure, we input a handler that has HTTP response writer, an HTTP request, and a string. That's what it takes in as parameters. And then it outputs a handler that only takes in an HTTP response writer and an HTTP request. Now we can actually use this to get around the, the uh, 
interface pattern for a handler function. So, one of the cool things that we can use this for is we can actually go up to all of our functions that um, pull titles out of URL path and we can change them. So for example, if we come up to our save function here, as you can see our title is being inputted by our URL path. We can actually just completely remove this and make our title into a parameter. So while now this doesn't follow the pattern of a HTTP handler, it will if we apply our closure to it. We can do the same for edit and of course view. So now we have our title string here for view, our title string for edit, and our title string for save. Our upload doesn't need it because we don't have a substring for upload, though we could add one as well. And our create doesn't really need it, so we can actually remove this part of the regex because we're not parsing create currently. It's something that we will probably end up doing later though. So to actually implement this, as you can see now we're getting errors for view, edit, and save inside of the handle func. And that is because they do not have the appropriate amount of parameters being passed to them. So what we can do is we can actually call our check path closure right here. So we're actually applying both closures to these functions. And our first closure, check path, is creating a handler with two parameters. And then our second closure is then checking to see if we have our cookie. All right, so now let's run this. So let's log in. And as you can see, everything is working as normal. And now if we go to, say, test, and let's just throw in some random variables, it will again just throw an empty page back to us. But if we now go in here and say, let's put an underscore in here, something that just doesn't match our regex, we get a 404 page not found. So now let's go back into create and let's create a new page. Let's enter a title, let's just call it view. And the body will be, this is the view page. We are testing our create handler. And let's create the page. And there we go. So this is now created. We can edit it like we edit any other page, save it, and all that. Let's take a look at our database before we go. So here's our database with the pages and users. And as you can see, here is our pages, and we now have our view pages in here. And it has, this is the view page testing our create handler. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. In our next tutorial, we will be uh, trying to clean up our application a bit more, make it more complete, and introducing a few more uh, different ideas. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, of course, feel free to comment. And if you disliked it, then go ahead and dislike as much as you want. If you guys want some more information on when videos will be coming out and on polls and things of that nature, feel free to go check out our Twitter, which will be in the description box below. Also, of course, as always, the source code for our projects will also be in that description box. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a good night.